conversation between Marchin and an ever so humble David Lee from China talking about co-op model, open sourcing things, working with Shenzhen. And uh, let's start on the co-op. So David, tell me how you think, uh, since you suggested that we should consider the co-op model, how would you see that working right now for OSE? Like what would be a tangible thing we could do? Well, I think the, 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 the co-op model is really a uh, productive tool owned by people who work on the, the productions. Um, so yeah. the, the, the open source and co-op uh, could easily be together uh, by thinking about the core, the people who use the tool and people who develop the tool uh, to be at the, to be, to share the organizations. Um, the, and in this way, the, the, the revenue from the, from the output uh, actually goes into uh, both uh, the, the people who use the tool and the people who work on the tool. Um, and for open source, um, in, for open source, it enables enable ways to make the well, for open source it enables a way for a many local group to work on the same projects because at the end of the day, a lot of this service uh, has to come from local. Uh, so I think with the, the open source model leads to very good, uh, well, the open source model leads to very good core to build up a new core. Yeah. So how would you see that happening for, for example, the 3D printer? Yeah, I think I think for three D printer is a little bit uh well is a is a little bit harder today. Uh is the uh I think quite interestingly is the uh finding a core productive use of three D printer. Uh it's not as well we are still looking for answer, I think. Mm -hmm. We're looking still looking for ways where three D printer actually uh become is actually um a productive tool. And you don't think 3D printers are there yet? Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen, I mean, um, I think majority of the 3D printers are good tool for education, uh, for people to understand in the, well, the it's a it's a tool for education right now, and I and the most productive use I have seen is also uh, just uh, occasional rapid prototyping uh, for the designer. Uh, other than that, um, we don't have anything really, and uh, really at the product grade coming out of the three D printer yet. What are your assumptions on that, like? I mean, you can 3D print various things, but you're saying it's not effective or so-called efficient by today's standards? But right now, it's not, it's not, it's not efficient to do a replication of a, 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 well, I mean, a unit of hundreds of something with 3D printer. Right. Uh, it has the very good characteristic of every single one of them can be customized. Uh, that customized. She doesn't really that customization. We can customize it, but now we we still haven't figured out the way of the what's the advantage brought by that customization. What about so we you're saying we haven't figured out the advantage of what customization like that would lead to in an economic way? Yeah, I think that's so. Uh, uh, to some, that's a, we, we still have some ways to uh, wait for that to, well, still, it's, a, it's still some time for that to happen. What do you think it takes, what do you think is required for that to happen? Uh, I mean, people, people should stop thinking about the different there as a replacement for man action, but thinking about how the deep printing is going to uh, complement the mass production. For example, instead of printing, try to print out the whole book, it's take the half 
assumptions you're making right if you have I mean that's a that's a complicated question right I mean yeah in the absence because of course in the absence of supply chains you can replace goods that are otherwise obtained from mass production right but, but at these days uh, um, the, the extensive of the, the, the and the global supply chain uh, and, the, and extensive, how extensive it is. Um, and I was, I, I was at this meeting at a, at a project uh, talking about rural vegetables in South America. Uh, and interestingly, everybody was there showing the pictures of the village. And then one, and then one part of the meeting going to the discussion of the um, the supply chain to bring stuff there, and then but at, on the screen we have the these pictures of a grocery store with a big Coca Cola sign on it. I said if they can get sugar water there, they can get everything else there. Um, so I think the the that there are extreme case to consider about the uh, the the lighting of the, the global supply chain. I think at this stage, uh, we did, we have enough uh, reach of these global supply chains to bring things uh, into huge amount of community. And the, the, the good the development of the heat printer is really to look at um, what's missing from what we have rather than try to replace what's already, what's already working uh, to some degree of very uh, high efficiency. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So, what, what, for example, would you say about just exploring the concept of here? Let's, let's give you an example of a part that I three D printed for the film and shredder. Let me just show you this one. Um, I want to show you an example and ask you where you think that fits in the scheme of three D printing. Because there's custom parts that we can produce, but let me let me show you an example of a 3D printed bearing. Let's see, maybe this. Let me see here. Okay, um, one, hold on, yeah, okay, let's take a look at this picture here, um, can I share my screen? Sure. Where did I share the screen? Uh, oh, this should be at the bottom somewhere. I want to do a, a, a screen cap and send it in the in the chat window. There's a button there. Um, don't see it. Where? Oh, let's see. Yeah. 
Let's see, where where do I find the screen share? Uh, on my, it's at the bottom, right next to the, to the right of the, uh, the dial. No, mine looks, oh, to the right. Right back. Snapshot. Oh, share screen there. There. Can you see my screen? Uh, I think it's coming. Yep, got it. Okay, so so there's a film and it's, it's a plastic shredder, and we actually made a an, a motor mount and a bearing mount, which are three D printed, and which would otherwise be impossible to make uh, source locally. Uh, what do you think of that in your scheme of uh, that's augmenting standard production or that's replacing? Because here it seems like it's replacing standard bearing holders. Because for one, like we couldn't find a bearing holder for that kind of hex bearing we had there. Um, well, I mean, I think this is the it's the <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, I think as a part, as a replacement, but I think as a whole, it's a complement. It's a complementary. Yeah. So at the core of this, there's you are you you build it with things. Yeah. Uh, easy to find, and but for efficient design, different reason, they are customized parts, and that's going to be that's where three D printer can do a very good job. Um, but the whole thing is, and this is going from uh, a, a a very three D printing century talks to uh. A, 3D printer as a tool, and I think in this case is the the whole shredder. The whole shredder is useful, uh, and 3D printer is one of the tools making it happen. Um, so yeah, I mean in in, in this case, uh, it's the um, it's around the the production of useful machine, yeah, like the shredder, and what 3D printer can help to make it happen. Right. Um. So you're developing a co-op for the LS, the light speed, low speed electric vehicle. Yeah. So we are looking at the so and um, yeah, coming from the thinking of the what's the what a space, what a space open source project can do to uh, starting to what well, be helpful for the people involved and. In the short term, can create dynamic value, and one of the exciting stuff I'm looking at is the the low speed vehicle, mm -hmm. the low speed electric vehicle. Um, they are, they, this machine are, uh, they are easy to build. They are actually cheap to build. Um, they have uh, immediate uh, community application yeah. um, in place like Africa. That's a rapid uh, need for the. There's a rapid need for transportation, uh, and the and the third thing is the solving the problem with the with COA, uh, the funding problem. So, uh, vehicle is a valuable asset, which means it's something can be used as a collateral or with the bank. Um, so, yeah. So the transportation, uh, when the transportation. Building can be driven by demand, uh, and the demand side can actually take on uh, a loan to finance the the building, uh, and the car itself, the transportation itself, is a tool of production. Uh, whether that's been used as the uh, transportation of goods or transportation of people, uh, so that's the I think the foundation there to lay out uh, for a co-op. To operate, uh, that's the financing, and that's the productive side. Uh, and on top of that is the when this scale up, uh, the the shared platform of this can also be operated as a co-op. Uh, it's not; they don't have to sign up to Ubers. They don't have to sign up to Lyft. They don't have to sign up to any of the sharing platform. But uh, basically, take the whole financing and actually just have people creating the app. 
uh, to extending the service. Uh, yeah, so, and this also helps to uh, grow the, uh, to grow EV, uh, because right now I think one of the issues with EV is the current industry day, uh, even though it's cheaper to do an electric version of the car, uh, but they cannot drop the price, the retail price of their car. Uh, so that's the that's a huge resistance. Uh, but with the new possibility of much more low wholly owned uh, car, um, I mean, if we simplify the structures of the car, uh, if we simplify the structures of the um, the the whole transportations, and when that structure is simplified. Uh, the branding, the, the, the car brand, uh, a lot of the assembly uh, design, everything yeah. can be bring into a much more local city or town level rather than having this giant global uh, automobile company. It's cheaper to make EVs right now, but why wouldn't, is the issue there that companies yeah, I mean, don't want to switch to EVs? Yeah, I mean, if I if I can sell you a thirty thousand dollar internal combustion engine, I'm not going to sell you a twenty thousand dollar version of the same car in in electric. So the the I mean the, the, this is the the, the insatiable demand for growth in the modern corporations. Uh, they cannot have drop in revenue. They cannot have drop in public, uh, profitability. Uh, does it imply that they cannot, they cannot get the same margins if their production costs are lower? Oh, I mean, they can. I, I think they can get a, they can get a even better margins. I mean, even today, uh, they introduced their car uh, switch to EV and just sell it at the same price. But it's not something that's going to be agreeable to by well, the shareholders. Uh, well, investors or Wall Street, as the if you have an EV, if you have a, a thirty thousand dollar car today, your EV version needs to be at least forty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. I mean, we got into this really bad cycle of the the car company will just go on and ask for government subsidies, um, and taking. I mean, that's pretty much uh, corporate welfare. Mm. Um, I think we right now. To localize EV, uh, EV production is making uh, car manufacture, car manufacturing going back to the old days where small yeah. cities, small towns can actually own their production to yeah, their trans We're on the same page. On, on we're that not, one. Yeah, we're here now, and it's just the uh, and in China, this uh, uh, small EV. Uh, Last year is already at about 1.7 million production. Yeah, uh, it's only to serve the local need of the two provinces. Is this relevant for so, the West too? Small electric. This small. Is, yeah, this is in, in the northwest, in the, in the northeast. Near uh, the the two problems is right adjacent to Beijing. Uh, so and yeah, and they. they, they yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to ask. So, so you think this is quite relevant? There would be a market for this in North America. Yeah. Uh, so this is the class of vehicle categorized as uh, an EV, uh, neighborhood ne uh, neighborhood vehicle. Yeah. Uh, in in the U.S. Uh, right now, in the regulation, they are not street legal. Uh, they can only be operated in the the, the private property. Uh, but that's a start, and I think there are already a lot of talks in uh, changing the NEV uh, regulation to be more locally used. And I think one of the the push for this would be uh, people testing the self-driving car. Uh, the low speed EV is self really good to uh, be a self-driving control, uh, just because it's motor control, uh, power steering, and it's flexible platform. Um, so I think the with the, with the change in self-driving, 
the same way the city can permit um, self-driving to be operated within the city limits, uh, the same thing can be can happen to the NEB as well. Uh, it's just the laying out the new, uh, more localized uh, productive economic uh, for the cities. How much does it take to turn the low-speed electric vehicle to a high-speed electric vehicle? Uh, a couple more battery. Uh, right now, the, the 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 motor technology has been advanced really fast. Um, a lot of them have been the powers to if you put enough juice on it, uh, they can go beyond seventy kilometer, which is around fifty miles. Um, they could do that, uh, but the Keeping it under uh, 50 miles is more of a compliance to the regulations. Um, so what's your plan for this? So you, you've got this as one of your projects in your incubator or how are you? Yeah, well, we, uh, we, so right now we're I'm at the stage of the, we are crafting a model uh, in terms of the, uh, put every element in place, bond, and we are talking to uh, several partners uh, in terms of secure fundings for pilot project. And the idea of this is the when the whole when when we get to the pilot, uh, what comes out of the pilot is the uh, real life example and the full documentation of how we get this done. Um, so yeah, I mean this is the and. With EV, that comes also with the uh, the demand for energies, and so yeah. Um, so right now we are at um, we just finished the the first stage of drafting the proposal document, uh, and uh, on this next stage to find to locate a uh, pilot site and also the potential funding. Um, are these documents shareable or they're private right now? Yeah, well, I'm going to, it, it, right now, it, they still clean up, we still have to clean up some of the text from the discussion, uh, but I am happy to make it open and shareable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when is the pilot coming out? Uh, as soon as we... Find our find our first funding. Uh, hopefully, uh, before the end of the uh, the end of this year. Uh, how much money does it take? Um, I think a small scale pilot with uh, fifty hundred car, uh, probably around half million dollars. Mm -hmm. You're looking for Chinese companies, or who are you looking for? I'm looking for, for uh, looking for anyone who's interested in uh, looking at how we can relocalize transportation. So China International. Yeah. It's you know the people open. from. You know the people from the open source electric vehicle that was not called that anymore. Are they part of this? Uh, no. Um, Is there any yeah, I mean, I, I know them well. Uh, no, we are now working on this one together. You are not? We are not. Uh, what is their model? Uh, how, I how, think they have... How does that they, differ? Uh, I think they just came out of the white combinator. Yeah. And I think right now they are more focusing on getting to the uh, level 4 uh, self-driving. Uh, than the, the the vehicle itself. Uh huh. So development of the automation part. Uh, or do you see collaboration in the future? Are they going to be? Yeah. Uh, we haven't haven't seen them for a while. Uh, probably we'll run into them sometime this November. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat. Yeah. Um, what do you think about their effort? I mean, is that is their effort considered open source? No, not anymore, right? Or yeah, well, I mean, they have, have the they uh, the their origin. I think 
the last time I seen them was probably three years ago, two or three years ago. Uh, they are still push. They are still getting the platform, everything. Um, and then they went to white combinators, uh, and they, yeah, and haven't just recently just seen their um, their new uh, their new plan uh, L four. So, or change up um, what to next time I see them. Yeah. So. Um, which parts of it? So, so this platform is going to be completely open source, or how are you going to release the after the pilot? Yeah, is it uh, well, going to be open source? Let's, the action. Here, let, let's turn off the video so that the talk is better. You mind turning off the video? Yep. Not able to hear you right now. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Can you turn off your your video? Hearing. Sure. No, stop sharing the screen here. Yeah. Yep. And. Okay. Yeah. Um, is this your main project right now? This the 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 light low speed the, electric vehicle. Oh, I fortune. Sorry, I can't hear. Let's let's uh, let's try again on Skype here. Um, let's try that again. So is this your main project right now, developing the co-op structure? Yeah, uh, trying to get to the trying to get this to the pilot. Uh, it's one of it's it's my key project right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so the idea is like how how do people get access to it in the future? So there'll be like you're looking at the Chinese supply chain producing the stuff, the parts. Yeah, well, I, well, I'm looking at Chinese supply chain as a full stopping point. So, um, so Chinese supply chain, to think about it, is uh, it's a layer and layer and layer. It's a stack. Yeah. Uh, so we want to provide a, a, a wrong way where uh, getting into this, starting with this, doesn't have to run on uh, building factory from beginning. Uh, in, in, in the very top is the uh, establish the 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 establish a co-op and a brand. Uh, and the initial small product small unit volume can be produced uh, right here. And as volume grown up uh, we're starting to take each layer of the productions, uh, moving it more toward local. Um, the this is the this is the flexibility of this layer and stack supply chain. Uh, every layer of things should be moved to where it's most efficient. Yeah, 
and uh, so how do you see things like like the, the you know for example the batteries or the electric motors themselves um, do you see those being manufactured distributed or that's going to be like China well I think for the so for the short term uh, this is probably I mean so each layer different. I think for car, uh, when we get to a couple hundreds, uh, that's very easy. The, the whole assembly, uh, a lot of components can be sourced locally. Uh, to get into the economy of scale for the motors uh, and battery, uh, that will probably, will probably be starting having to look at uh, million units. Uh, but it's all doable. I mean, the, 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 the supply chain uh, and the production is very flexible, uh, and it's also hopefully by the time the scale starting to emerge, uh, the another lo another small startup everywhere can starting to improve on new kind of motors, new kind of battery, uh, new kind of the uh, technology. Yeah. Uh, but right now is to look at look at China supply chain as. Uh, uh, a, a source of open source component and open source design uh, and to, as a bootstrapping point. Yeah. Um, and in long terms, is look at uh, what's starting to make sense to move. And yeah. making sense that the move should be, the move should be more uh, in terms of the economics rather than philosophic or political. Economics, rather. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you mean by that? Like, then, then philosophical or political? Uh, yeah, I think right now that's the that that's a philosophy of building, uh, especially looking at building or maker space. Is the if we build it, the production will come. Uh, kind of feel of dreams, kind of stuff, kind of way of thinking. But mm -hmm. uh, that. I forgot to put into a, a, a thinking of the uh, the machine, the the people who's operate. It's not just machine; it's also people who's willing to operate the machine professionally. Uh, the whole thing, the rent, everything adding up. If it, if it's not producing, uh, the whole thing is just keep on piling up and spending money, and we get we have so many incidents. Uh, so many examples of the government funded maker space uh, yeah. is not is neither productive or it's not really conducting any meaningful educations. Um, so it's basically well, a space. Uh, and so I think the, the the first and foremost and for the for organization like this and this is also a good reason to make this a co op rather than a cup is the uh, Co-op has a very strong need for SGP productive uh, organizations. Uh, it's not just a membership to share common interests. Uh, it's also uh, a membership to share uh, uh, the, the the living hood. Yeah. So the we thinking about how uh, make a space as a co-op. Uh, would actually help the help structure the maker space to be more uh, productive, uh, and same as the how the open source hardware yeah. would emerge, would, would engage with the, this kind of productivity space. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a longer discussion. But I would like to take a look at this. Is the document ready for sharing? Like, can you can you share the your design document for the co-op? Like you gotta, you gotta, yeah, uh, I should have it ready probably today, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we just had the uh, a last meeting wrap up yesterday, and there's still some notes I have to clean up. Yeah. But after that, again, I'll, I'll share that. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to ask you regarding that potential Africa pilot, which I still haven't written that up. Uh, do you want to be con included in there in a sp in a, some specific way, like? If we do build the, the Ghana tractor, 
micro tractor. Yeah. Yeah. In that'd way. be that'd be great. I think that's the. Um, so for the tractor that's on the the most smart uh, agriculture side, so I would I should love to see uh, electric based tractor. Uh, to see to see how we can take this the the, the motor from these cars and how to apply it to a uh, farming machine. Yeah, I don't see that. I don't see electric working on that. It's hydraulics. You got to do hydraulics, man. I mean, ex electrics are much more expensive and less torque. Are you open well, to electric 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 or? or not? Yeah, I think we can. We can. We can. We can think about this. So. Yeah. Um, There's different, yeah, there's different ways to do it. So, mm -hmm. well, the, well, I think for the, the tractor side, uh, well, I mean, you're going to be in, yeah, you're going to be in my region next next week. Yeah, so let's, let's we can talk about this in person. Yeah, let's talk more about that. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, in the meantime, do you have any contacts in the San Francisco Bay Area regarding no, I mean, right now, so we hired our two people in California in, in the Bay Area, and we're working on a 3D printer as a tool that we produce through the, when they build workshops, we can package uh, continuing education and a practical product around that, but we're, we're looking at doing the marketing and s securing venues. Do you have any advice on uh, actually the... You know, the market research, like what kind of a business model would be ideal for us rolling out the 3D printer if we can build the 3D printer effectively and in our collaborative build model? I mean, what, do you have any suggestions on that right yeah. now? Yeah, well, I think the, uh, there are a couple of new uh, mega space, the, the space up and coming for our prototype uh, in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the the 3D printer is a very good uh, interface to uh, thinking about robotics. I mean, it's a, a 3D printer. It's a basically three-dimensional uh, robot positioning. Uh, yeah. And from there, I think uh, it's also uh, not just building the 3D printer, but also the another another part to look at is the uh, thinking about G call as uh, a, a ways to um, help people get into robotics. So I think one of the exercises of building 3D printer is not about 3D printing. Uh, it's about, about be familiar with the the three dimensional movement of robotic arm, uh, and that would help to I think with that and the build scale of the 3D printer that should lead to more interesting applications. I mean, the three, it doesn't have to be a 3D printed head. Um, it's, it could be anything. And this is getting, well, I think the opportunity to uh, help more people thinking about how they can turn this into a, a productive machine, uh, not to not necessary to 3D print. Um, I mean, one of the example would be uh, a lot of this uh, repetitive uh, testing work. So there are people building uh, bio lab, bio lab uh, testing kit, testing machine, uh, basically using 3D printer framework. So yeah. I think that, that that would be the thing is the, and then how to get this machine, circling them back to as part of the collection of this uh, 3D printing buildings. Um, yeah, I think I think it would be more interesting to look at uh, this not as just building a 3D printer, but as a uh, 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 entry into uh, robotics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And as far as, um, you know, have you thought, given thought to if we can produce, so you've got people that, um, you know, that now we got pay. 
and regarding a, a successful revenue model, what are you? What are your suggestions? Because right now we can offer kits, we can offer a build experience. Like, like our, our typical model has been, we have people build machines and we charge a person three hundred dollars over the build materials price uh, to for that experience. So it's basically, um, like, say twelve people build their three D printers, they'll be like thirty six hundred dollars for that event that happens on a day time frame. That's been our model. But then then there's other ways where people give continuing education, like two two-day workshops where you teach teachers how to, one, build the printer, and two, how to use it and how to design things a little bit. Um, so, for example, I made 3D, which is another company. They charge $2,000 for a pair of teachers to give them this this two-day experience, including taking the 3D printer home uh, to, to whatever, their school or whatever. But, um, I don't know, any, any further thoughts on that? Or what, what you would suggest we do because we've got the universal access system I mean the advantage for us is that we've got like the lowest unique part count in the world we've got the unique act uh, basically the universal access which we do for XYZ motion you can reconfigure it in various ways you can scale it up and so forth um, have you seen the universal access maybe I should uh, show yeah. you well, let, me, let me show you the so it shows that we can build like larger printers, smaller printers. Let me just send you that link right here in the chat box. Um, yeah, take a look at that. Um, show some of the different variations uh, but that's that's what we have and I, I'm wondering if you have any suggestions based on that from the enterprise perspective and how to make this work economically so if we can produce a deliver a product of a 3d printer with a very flexible motion system which can be expanded to other machines like uh, we've also built a, a CNC circuit mill out of the identical parts um, is that coming through Got it. Nice. Yeah, I think this is the, the this is a kind of uh, foundational um, foundation for building. Mm -hmm. What basically um, a robotic platform. Uh, so yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that page you just sent me. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Um, yeah, so you make it larger things. You know, the larger, you know, if you use, instead of five, eight millimeter rods, you use 25 millimeter rods for a machine that's like a, more like a CNC torch table or a router. And then we're also planning on using that in a two inch and three inch rod version for super heavy duty machining. So talking about making engines. So this is where I talk about the open source micro factories. I want to bring all that kind of production over into every fab lab, uh, every open source micro factory. Um, so uh, that's that's what's interesting here. But um, yeah, yeah. So so we're tr exploring how to survive doing this. You know, how do we make money? How can we scale? Have you also this? think about yeah? Have you also think about open uh, doing online course? online course um, not so much like uh, we uh, what would you suggest an online course on what on what would be the content what would you see as the most valuable uh, content for an online course I mean, that you, you, have, you have a, you have a I mean, this has a very low, uh, unique part count yeah. and I think the it is easy to put together everywhere and it has the it has the extensibilities to not just as a, a small desktop printer, mm -hmm. but the whole idea can be extended. So there's mm -hmm. probably a couple uh, different level of course uh, going from uh, building a, a, a simple uh, XYZ uh, platform and all the way, I think, to the to how to get this to to, to be a, a large uh, a large yeah, a large CNC mill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and and basically having this as the yeah the foundation for uh, building the flat machine. And I think there there is there a lot of interest out there. Um, in I think even in the flat network, uh, to learn about this. Yeah, yeah. How would you how would you do you have thoughts on the cost structure? What would be like an extended course? Because that would definitely takes takes some development, right? Is that something we should do right now, so that we can leverage that for just training a lot of people? I think so. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, no, that's that's interesting. I, I think it would be good to have a, a a proper conversation with the uh, the Fed Foundation and a couple uh, Fed uh, a couple Fed Lab. I think uh, there would be a lot of there should be a lot of interest in. Uh, this kind of structures. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's one of the one of the structure was uh, was supposed to be delivered by the the FedEx point of, but never get around to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do you have particular contacts with Fab Foundation? Who who would I be talking to there? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, I, I can connect you to, uh, I think, Sherry. What's her last the, name? She's, Sherry, uh, what's Sherry's last name? Sherry is, she's the, she's the chairwoman of uh, the foundation. Uh-huh. Is this Sherry Lasseter or something? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, did you go to MIT? Oh, uh, no. Where'd you go to school? USC. USC, okay. Yeah. Um, so I mean, what I mean, how to how to um, you know approach that since they're you know they're not, I don't see a lot of interest in uh, in their open sourcing a lot of that. I mean, is she really open to that kind of stuff like that? We're bootstrapping to open source machines because I mean I you know talking to people there like yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's one of the big uh big vision on the 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 Fed Lab 2.0 mm -hmm. where the the well the, the lab machine makes machine. But that um that part of it uh was well it didn't come it didn't come too far. Uh that's the the lack of the I think the foundational design for uh a lot of this uh basic components. Um and the the this universal uh, exit should to play a big part of this, and there should be a lot of inches out of the uh, different fed lab. Yeah, and the other part of this is also uh, yes, there are a lot of common part, but it's also good to thinking about putting together a kit. Uh, the I mean that's always a good business model. Uh, helping people who's too lazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so make a uh, kid, yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. make a kid, and people can order order the kid. Uh, that's the uh, that. I mean, that's a, that's always a good. I think that's always a good open source uh, business model. Um, helping people who who doesn't have time to figure everything out. Um, that's I think that's that's. Yeah, do it's, you think that yeah, working model for open source? Do you think that a kit just for the axes by itself would sell, or it has to be in the f finished form of a thing like a three D printer or a circuit mill? Yeah, well, I mean by itself, I think by itself, and also the also kind of show people what they can do with the with all this exit, uh, not just three D printers, and and when this goes out. I mean, when that, I, I, I see you also, also have WebGL, uh, 
a G FGL integration. So yeah. this is looking at people doing a lot of different um, fun stuff with the with, with things can move in one dimension, two dimension, three dimension. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you think that the a, one good product would actually be the axis itself and then another product would be the machines that consist of, of these axes and other parts? So there's two types of kits? Yeah. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we can roll out I the axis. One, one of them. Yeah, well, well like, what, what the axis right now... So, 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 sorry, hold on. Uh, because the access right now, without much development, we can just roll it out, put it on our website as an available part for sale. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I think one of the one of the interesting reference for this is the is little bits. Uh, yeah. They actually have a lot of the showcase about. What they are doing with the with the with the bits, mm -hmm. um, and oh, smartly yeah. they have they, they together the effort and then they keep put on. Okay, well, if you want to build similar projects, yeah. here is all the part you need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think I think. It's, yeah, and th that's actually a, 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 a commercial availability of this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, exit, but then they, there, there's no open source version. And yeah, yeah. I think the one gets built into the printer right now, they are too, they're not very flexible. Right, exactly. So that, that's a, I think there's a, there's a need out there for this. And it's also when we start into you're starting to enable people to build this, to have easy access to this kind of motions. Yeah. And the 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 application was starting to come out of the community. Uh, so you'd frame it as there's a need out there for a construction set. Yeah. I mean, I can see people do integrating this into uh, our projects. Into their into their uh, installation projects. Um, what installation projects? It's uh, a lot of the interactive art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Yeah. Did you notice that we use the same and thing on the Z axis, and we can we can actually lift the big ass two two foot axis just with the tiny motors, and it's belt. It's not. All X, Y, and Z oh. are all belt. Oh, cool! And it actually works. Works. You, you can actually spring load it, so you you have more strength too. But anyway, no, that's cool. Um, do you, so do you think there's any resistance within Fab itself to 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 a fully open source Fab Lab or so, in other words, is there, um, is that just ignorance or evil that's prevented? There's that? always the, <laughs> the vision. Uh-huh. No, I think that's, that's always the vision, but that's just not, um, um, that's just too many projects uh, all around, so mm -hmm. uh, it never gets to that. Uh, that, was a, that was actually a big vision lay out in, in the in, in the book. the sixteen chapter and also in the book. Yeah, but I mean, and, if, and if the vision is always there. It's just the is the, it, yeah. the the whole people working out the economic models. Okay, now the vision. There's a we understand that there's a difference between vision and execution. So you're saying it's simply that gap or the the actual lack of that true vision, or lack of commit, or lack of commitment oh, to that vision. I think that it's the gap to the to to that to to the executions. Okay. Okay. So you you suggest I should be talking to Sherry Lasseter and then um, and then 
see where she takes that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, let me see this. Uh, I mean, basically, I think just um, make aware of the availability of the kid uh, across the network. Uh, should bring a lot of interest. Now, does that mean that before I go out there, would I want to be pre present that kit as already available? So just do a little bit of work and and make it available before, like, because I like to publish early and often and kind of like involve people early on. But should we actually, okay, put this online, just show some, just just, just do a little bit more work on it? And, in other words, just, just in terms of marketing it, just market it a little bit, in other words, you know, get maybe some product brochures or put it on a website in a, in a good form where you can actually buy the kit or that's not needed at this time. Yeah, no, I think with the website, I mean, it's always good to, uh, I think both for, for open source hardware project, it's always good to have, uh, to always get into the place where you see the projects and, and that actually uh, other than teach you how to build it, that's actually uh, uh, a place to click on and say, okay, well, I want to buy the, the, the kit so I can do okay. it myself. Okay. So get to that. Uh, so put a kit on our website, and after that, pretty much uh, go off on that and talk to Sherry? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. No, because, I mean, if they could get involved in the, in the concept to actually start using it, but more than that, to actually, because the next step on that, for our heavy machine fabrication, it's building the open source CNC torch table based on the 25 millimeter version of this, this axis, which we've done a prototype last year, but it's not a product release. I actually wanted to make it oxyhydrogen for off-grid operations, so you don't have to, you don't have any feedstocks like oxy acetylene or even electricity like i think oxyhydrogen is the most robust way to cut steel as opposed to plasma and others if you talk about say africa you know plasma cutters have rare parts in them but i think oxyhydrogen you're familiar with oxyhydrogen i'm uh, not very familiar yeah, I mean, one thing, I, I, from my perspective, from the ecological perspective and a systems perspective, I, I believe that oxyhydrogen is the way to go instead of oxyacetylene or plasma cutters uh, because it's a low-cost available fuel from water. And it's proven, it's, it's well proven. And actually, it's one of the things, like, it, it exists very well in AliExpress and, or Alibaba. So I know they do have a lot of these electrolyzers for on-demand hydrogen production. That's something I'd like to open source for this mm -hmm. to, to make that more accessible. But that's that would have huge implications for places like Africa where you don't you might not have an oxyacetylene gas or replacement parts for CNC cutter for CNC for, sorry for for plasma cutters which are higher tech. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, I, what I'm saying is uh, if we could get the Fab Lab around doing this, but it kind of takes them, you know, like kind of hard convincing people of these kind of like appropriate what I would call appropriate technology routes um, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of resistance to that but it would be ideal if they could get involved in in uh, actually developing the oxyhydrogen open source oxyhydrogen cutting you know that would be awesome yeah well I think the the um, right now is the the any organization will have uh, resistance, but it's also uh, through the network finding the finding the rare few who's uh, really interesting and uh, would like to contribute. Yeah. Um, yeah it's probably so I think getting the information out there, getting the uh, message out there, um, yeah, is it is key for again the spread yeah it will be I, I think there will be some adoption of that because you know like m my opinion most of the fab fab lab stuff it's a lot of exotic trinkets very high-tech trinkets but uh, none of that's particularly economically significant but but I think there's enough people in the network there that would actually appreciate just a robust super simple design I mean there's nothing special about the axis it's very simple 
but I think that's what makes it very powerful and, and flexible. Uh, I think there's going to be at least some people that, that can appreciate this, this level of, I mean, I would call it simplicity, you know. Well, they are. I mean, they are. Uh, we, we we see um, the 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 home view machine, uh, home view CNC, uh, laser cut, laser engravers. Uh, yeah. But it has never been very easy because the the part yeah. is not modularized enough. Right. Uh, right. And this is this the a great modularized projects and yeah. with this scalability from yeah, yeah. both the uh, small to big. So. Right. I think, yeah, uh, just, just uh, yeah, I would say this, looking more at this, more of the, more as the, uh, a, 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 robotic cons uh, a, a robotic construction kit rather than 3D printing construction kits. Huh. Okay. Okay. No, that's, yeah. that's a good hint. And so they are robotics also, construction yeah. set rather than a 3D printer construction set, because they have called it a 3D printer construction set. But you're right, maybe uh, framing it more broadly will help its adoption. Yeah. And yeah. also thinking about the, because you, you, you do have this in big size, so different attachment, yeah. uh, not, to, not just doing uh, 3D printing and cutting. And this is also a uh, placement and industrial automations. Um, and a lot of industrial automation are basically taking this kind of exit and do something with, with right. different attachment. Uh, right. the, the suction cups, the uh, different kind of the actuator yep. manipulator. Right. Um, so, yeah, with that freedom to move in space yeah. with positions. Uh, and there are a lot of the new possibility. All right, Masik, I had to jump into another call. Yep. Uh, okay. Sorry about in. No problem. Late. Sorry about the later. Yeah. But yeah, we'll we'll see you next week. So so you're gonna, I guess let's communicate an email where where I'm gonna meet you on that, the twenty third, because uh, yeah. we're meeting on the twenty third, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's coordinate it over email. Over uh, email. Uh, well, Okay, yeah. great. Okay, David, thank you so well, much. We'll soon. talk soon. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yep, bye.